I understand that I have pressure from the outside world. I'm not going to defend the gold medal, I'm going there to turn up to the games in front of that start wand, know that I've done absolutely everything that I possibly can in my power to get the results that we deserve. Adam Hall, the defending Paralympic slalom gold medalist. Ski racing is still ski racing. It's the fastest guy that goes home with the gold medal at the end of the day. Ski racing is not always pretty, but it's always exciting. But he still wins it! Unbelievable! Well, we're just heading up the mountain uh, again. Uh, another day at my office, so to speak. And, uh, another day in paradise. At home in Wanaka, the training started all over again. One gold wasn't enough. I'm a professional in what I do. Uh, it's basically my job, it's my full-time job. I probably work two to three times harder than any full-time employee. So basically what I do, I do it for free. Uh, I do it for the love and the passion. Adam competes as a para-alpine skier in the standing classification. Athletes in this division have impairments in both legs. I have a uh, spinal bifida and my level is L5S1. Basically at birth you're born with a hole in the back. Spine isn't formed um, or developed um, normally and therefore depending on that depends on the level of your movement. So I'm reasonably lucky to be able to have the movements that I do have. So I fall over all the time, so I'm, I know what I'm doing, I suppose, when I fall over, just go with the flow. As Adam developed his skills, it was his mum, Gail, who drove him. She knows how hard he has to work to get to the top. The first year of his life was lots of operations. He had surgery only when he was 14 hours old. And that was to close over the, the defect in his back where the spina bifida was. He then had to have a shunt put into his skull, which was just to drain the fluid around the outside of his brain back into his body. He had to have some surgery on his ankle when he was about two and a half to straighten it so he could walk. Yeah, as time went on, the operations got less and um, he started doing things that we probably didn't expect that he would um, and certainly never imagined in a million years he'd be doing what he's doing now. If others doubted Adam's potential, Gail never did. When he first went to school, he would just participate in all physical sports like the rest of the kids and would be seen to be hanging out on the basketball court doing hoops but perfecting it all the time. Well, I kind of knew then that if we could maintain his health and his self-esteem that he would be able to achieve in a sport, but he particularly achieved in areas where he wanted to go fast. I'd like to and compete against heaps of things and one day go to the Olympics. When he was six he got on some skis and he didn't really like it because he couldn't hold his skis together. So for his 11th birthday he got a board and he just boarded right up until August last year. Because snowboarding is not yet in the Paralympics, it's not a Paralympic sport as yet, I decided if I was to try and qualify for for next year in Torino that I'd have to make a change and of course that would have to be changing to skis. Well, here we are. He's skiing and he's just kicking some ass. Go, man, go. His rise in the world rankings was as swift as his downhill speed. I'm on a day-to-day -day basis, I try not to let my disability let me down or affect me in any way. I try and, if I come to something that's stopping me, I try to, you know, that's where you evaluate and that's where the, the adaptive stuff comes in, I guess. Adam has two adaptions on his skiing equipment. He has outriggers on his ski poles, which act as balancing devices. He also has his skis tethered with a piece of bungee. Yeah, I have my skis tied together at the top simply because my hips and below is not as strong as somebody that has, you know, that full control and muscle power. So without 
my skis being tied together at the tips, my feet would simply split and go their separate ways. In 2006, Adam is named in the New Zealand Paralympic ski team. Being named in the New Zealand Paralympic team to go to Torino was a big thrill. It doesn't come overnight and me, myself, I still have a long way to go, um, even after Torino. So I'm not at my peak yet and we'll see what the future brings. He doesn't medal, but Adam Hall becomes the one to watch. We really didn't know how far it would go, but I kind of had a feeling when he first went overseas when he was 15 that, you know, he'd been tal his talent had been spotted. And as the summers turned into winters and he would get on a plane in November and spend five months overseas ski racing and training, the, the financial contribution became more and more. And so we had to kind of work out what, how, how we were going to go about it and whether we were going to continue doing it or whether, you know, actually, well, at the end of the season, mate, we can't actually do it anymore. And it, it, we never did say we couldn't. Um, but it just meant we had to work harder, his father had to milk more cows, and I had to deliver more babies. <laughs> Back home in Dunedin, Adam paid his dues, milking those cows. So, can he remember his farm work, or has he forgotten it all? Oh, he, he's a wee bit rusty on, on the tractor work type things, but well, with having a different tractor this season, um, something new for him. But yeah, no, he's usually pretty good. Yeah. He, how, is it, how is it having him home? Yeah, it's good. So, someone to run around after me, do, doing the odd chores, yeah, instead of us running around after him. I think Adam's level-headedness and his ability to work as hard as he does comes from being brought up on this farm. He has an incredibly strong work ethic, which he's picked up from working around here. He has a lot of stickability, he doesn't give up easily, and he just wants to get better and better. And so we, uh, we're just here to support him and follow him around the world, um, even though it is only by text messaging. <laughs> Winter Park is a world-leading training venue for para-athletes. Adam calls this his second home. Uh, you know, this is my sixth season back here in town, and I guess you could probably say I'm pretty much a local by now. You know, just be patient with those turns and making sure that you're keeping your shoulders and your eyes going down the hill, even though the skis don't feel super clean in the snow. But once you build the momentum, really try to increase the bend in that ski by, by you know, adding that angulation in that hip. Even America's top Paralympic coach regards the Kiwi as enormously talented. I mean, Adam's probably the hardest working athlete in the world right now. The fact that he, he comes from what I, what I refer to as salt to the earth, you know, being growing up on a farm and, and you know, having to milk cows. I mean, he comes out here and you know, has a tremendous work ethic, you know, you know and that work ethic is, is shown through in, in his success in the, in the World Cup level. Every single day, probably almost every hour of the day that I'm awake, I am thinking of myself going down the course, what my runs are going to be like, how my skis are going through the snow, what the conditions are going to be like, finishing the race, being on top of that podium with a gold medal around my neck, with the national anthem playing, you know, and being amongst all my friends and family that will be there watching. He does have the X Factor, he has what it takes to be a champion, you know, he's got the stickability, he never gives up, you know, if the race isn't so good he just thinks, oh well, the next one will be better and it's a really great asset to have for his future and we, yeah, we just can't wait to watch the space. She didn't have to wait too long. With his mum Gail proudly watching from the sidelines, Adam delivers her the gold medal she knew he'd achieve. He's got a couple of seconds to play. Adam has a 2.3 second lead into the last run. Adam Hall. New Zealand no 
and then this. Oh no! Oh no! Adam Hall has probably slid out of contention right there. But he still wins it! Unbelievable! When I fell, you know, I didn't hear anything. Just get up. I didn't think about, you know, where am I going to end up. You know, I was just a sit back, just get back up on the horse and, you know, leave everything that I've done up there and cross the finish line. Proud of Adam is... I need to say more than that because I, I, it's hard to explain sometimes as his mum. I watch him and I think, wow. And I often say, I often see it and say it to him a lot. And he's just like, whatever, you know. But he doesn't see it. He just, he just thinks he's the kid having fun on snow. The joy of winning gold for his country has turned to grief for a Paralympic hero. Gold medal skier Adam Hall's mother has died in a car crash. Gail Hall dedicated much of her life to helping her disabled son and was with him last month when he won gold in Canada. She was a proud mum, her Paralympian son's number one fan. And the backbone of her family she's been tragically taken from. You just never know what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. To lose basically my number one, you know, supporter uh, and helper, mentor and follower is going to be really hard to get over, and it's going to be not not so much a struggle, but the next four years towards the next Olympics is going to have a hell of a lot of more meaning behind it, and it's going to definitely be for her. Even though he had been away from home every year for almost a decade, it was hard to summon the same energy without Mum on the other end of a phone. I think with everything that's happened and you know during my whole career, I guess you know the ups and downs and everything that's come with it. I think the life skills that this has taught me, you know, not only from from my family with my upbringing, but the sport, you know, planning, budgeting organising, you know, making sure that you're turning up to places on time and, you know, making sure that you can do whatever you can to be the best in the world. And I think, you know, that's a great thing to take away from, from what I've done. No big goals this year, just small strategic changes to his technique. So long as we're still making breakthroughs, still pushing the sport, uh, you know, it's, it keeps it fresh for me, it keeps it good, it doesn't get old. Every day is completely different. And that's the great thing about it, and the great thing about adaptive sport is that, you know, we don't know what the limits are. And, you know, every day we're pushing the limits, you know, with equipment and whatever it is that we can, and especially with the body as well. Yeah, we're, we're still looking for the level shoulders, bringing the vision down the hill. This campaign, Adams enlisted the help of a new coach. Scott Olson. He has 22 years of high performance coaching under his belt. And well inside the able body. Adam keeps getting better because Adam looks to surround himself with good people. He doesn't only look at the skis under his feet, but the AFOs, the boots, and all the science that can be brought into it. In his quest to go faster, Adam and Scott have looked to advance every piece of equipment that Adam uses. For Adam to walk and ski, he uses a customised prosthetic called an AFO to support his legs, severely weakened by spina bifida. So every time that we want to make a new AFO, we just call back to New Zealand and they take a life-size copy like this and they make a new AFO just for Adam. If we want to take and move the calcaneus over, we have a 3D image that tells us what happens to the ankle, to the tib fib, to the femur, to the hip, and so the technology just allows us to move things and change it in minute little increments so that we can improve him without hurting him.
The major changes uh, from my old AFOs to these ones is that the shaft on the other ones were pretty much at 90 degrees, whereas with this one here, it's, it's fought a little bit, so it's been basically x-rayed off my ski boot. Secondly, the other big change that we made as well and that I need is, is this flex here. So when I'm going through a turn, I need this to flex through through the turn and then also to be able to have this leverage to come back and then to regenerate you know, that power into the next turn as well. This is not being done with anybody else in the world right now. And David Boyd at Foot Science has, has pioneered this and we we will be making more and more strides because of stuff like this. Skiing is Adam's full-time job. He's either in the gym or on the slopes all year round, pushing for the edge that's going to keep him on top. Yeah, you know, I've always been a firm believer of, you know, you work hard, you know, the results will chase, chase you and, and have to be able to, you know, continue getting stronger, continue you know, getting more flexible, uh, working on technique, trying to make sure that you're doing similar things in the gym that can pay off on the snow, so making things, you know, very, very similar from a movement point of view. I'm going to correct your pelvis here. He's added Pilates into his training regime. With your neck, lengthen through the head, draw up and in through the belly, feel that shoulder girdle contraction. We've taken it beyond just the traditional Pilates work, but keeping with the same principles, using the equipment in thousands of different ways in order to facilitate his, the best programming for his body. Push, kick, and kick, and kick. And I've seen his control over his trunk, over his shoulder girdle, over his legs, really change and, and really grow from the place of neuromuscular re-education and neuromuscular relearning. What do you think? Yeah, it's good. What worked? Everything. Everything. <laughs> Last season, Adam maintained the world number one spot in slalom. He sat in the top three in Super G and Super Combined. Sochi 2014 is where he must peak. The world championships in Spain will benchmark where he's at. One hundred and twenty athletes from twenty-eight countries are competing in thirty medal events. Every athlete is classified based on their level of disability. The athletes are split into three classes, visually impaired, sitting and standing. All of Adam's main competitors in the standing classification are here. Victory at the World Champs could be a psychological advantage for Sochi. Adam is a He's a very nice skier. In slalom, he's really, really, really fast. And maybe in super combine, he can, he can do it too. So that will be very close about, you, about Adam and me, I think. Adam's on the snow early to inspect the course. Uh, generally, the whole of Europe is known for its icy hard condition. You just have to pull out your toolbox, you know, in training that you do do in New Zealand on the hard snow. You know, that's what ski racing is all about. You don't know what kind of conditions you're going to get thrown at you. Here we have some huge flat sections at the top, which is really hard for Adam because they can't skate. So uh, someone who's missing an arm can still skate really well and they get really good on the flats. Uh, whereas Adam is really good on steeps. He can use that gravity and his body weight to, to carve really good turns. Right there. <laughs> I remember it was 55 to 66 on the flats, mm -hmm. 61 to 41 on the breakover, second flats, five gates, 60 meters apart. So tomorrow's race is a blank sheet of paper, and we'll fill this in tomorrow as we go through inspection. That blank sheet of paper will go from this to this. We'll write down blanks. Uh, how far the gates are apart, combinations, things, uh, you know, breakovers and things like that, that that we're concerned about that we want to focus on versus the number of gates on a hill. We don't want to count 55 gates next to impossible as they're coming at you at about a second apiece. Uh, 
Now this next period now we we are going to step up the the mental game. Uh, you know, getting him a robust and b uh, a bit more you know aggressive in his his approach to this ne next event. Paralympic field stepped up a reasonable amount, uh, so you know we just need to step our game up as well. It's the morning of Adam's favourite event, the slalom. The pressure's on Adam to defend his number one world ranking. There's a bunch of probably five to six guys that are right up there, you know, at Adam's level, and at any time those guys are juggling around the podium. I'm up there, I, I don't even look at the other guys before me racing. I turn my back to the start one and focus exactly on what I need to do to get down and that's it. At the end of the run, he sits third. And that's where he finishes in the World Champs, taking the bronze medal. Third classified the bronze medal, 1 minute 57 69 from New Zealand, Adam Hall. Take the good out of the good and the bad out of the bad and, and move on and, and learn from, from that and, you know, just move forward with it and know what we could have come away with uh, and, you know, know that we still have a year and a bit for our Pinnacle event. Adam had time to reflect and rebuild. There's just one goal ahead now, the Sochi 2014 Paralympic Winter Games. Back in New Zealand, Adam's been working on improving the changes to his equipment and technique. Although his world ranking has slipped, his supporters still believe in him. New Zealand has been a, a huge, huge supporter of his. Uh, the ski areas here, Coronet, Cardrona, have opened their arms to Adam and he wants to come here and represent very, very well. Over the New Zealand winter, Adam and Scott have looked for conditions that will be similar to Sochi. Sochi could be soft snow, Sochi could be ice, Sochi could be in the rain. And so we've been trying to train every possible scenario that we can. So we've looked and looked for hard snow, uh, ice, uh, skiing in powder, uh, which is a huge task for Adam with his skis tied together like that. After a full season on the New Zealand slopes, Adam's back in competition mode. This time, it's the Winter Games, a World Cup event. But the chance for Adam to reassert himself on the world stage has been made more difficult. Adam's struggling with a bout of food poisoning. It's, it's, uh, it's tough, I mean, it's, uh, it's not much we can do about it, you know, um, once it's happened, but we spend a lot of time putting fluids back into him and uh, we were quite good on the energy conservation. Uh, and today, same thing, he had his appetite back, but uh, there is that lag in the, in the energy. Um, you know, for us, it makes sure that we, we plan around that come, uh, come Sochi. He's had a bit of sickness in the past, so we need to prep well for that. Matt Hallett of Canada. Can he keep pressure on Adam? 
It's certainly an impressive run. Well, very few mistakes, and the pressure is going to be on New Zealand superstar Adam Hall. To his rhythm. You can see just how steep those first few turns are. But that's a superb line onto the second steep pitch. That's how to carve a turn. Well, it's just great having the best skiers here in the world. And this looks good enough to me if he can keep it going to the finish to take the gold medal. Smooth, dynamic. And this has got to do it. Adam Hall is the winner. And that's right, Adam Hall is the winner. He has taken first place. What a fantastic run. <laughs> Post Spain, this was a very key event for us. Uh, we're, we're back on track. We've got a right team in the place. Uh, office staff, all the way down to a technician. Everybody's in place. The plan is there and it's working. From New Zealand, in the men's standing category, two days in a row from New Zealand, Adam Hall. made a lot of changes, made a lot of good things happen this season and for the first time in a long time I'm starting to get the good feeling back in my skiing and having that good trust, kind of feeling that bulletproofness of you know feeling really strong both mentally and physically and we've still got a lot of work to put into that and, and it'll get you know more and more robust. It's been the toughest four years he's known and now's the time to defend his gold medal. He'll be doing it for himself, his country and a memory of his mum.